This video documents the results of an experiment performed to characterize the effects of different surface treatments on the amount pool balls throw. Here's the test shot used in the experiment. The 13 ball is frozen to the 9 ball and the cue ball is hit squarely into the 13 ball to create a center to edge half ball hit on the 9 ball. The frozen combination simulates a normal non-frozen stun shot where throw is maximum. The balls were tapped into place and marked with donuts to help ensure accurate and consistent placement. The plastic triangle was used to verify the 30 degree cut angle. A ruler is taped to the end rail with the zero position placed on the center line of the table. This template is available in the Instructor and Student Resources section at billiards.colostate.edu. With a straight shot along the line of centers, the nine ball is not thrown at all and it heads straight up table. Notice how the stripe stays perfectly vertical when there is no cut angle or throw. Here, the zero point on the ruler isn't aligned perfectly with the straight hit direction, but this offset will be subtracted from the throw measurements when calculating angles. The first set of tests I did show how throw varies with shot speed. Notice how much spin gets transferred to the 9 ball when there is cut induced throw. The stripe doesn't stay vertical as with the straight shot. Here's a summary of the measurements and calculations. The smallest amount of throw was about 3.5 degrees and the largest was about 6. Here's a plot of the data showing how throw is less at higher speeds. This is due to the fact that the coefficient of friction is less at faster relative surface sliding speeds. So on cut shots, if you want the object ball to head in a more true direction closer to the line of centers, use more speed. Notice how at the slowest speed, the throw is about the same as at the next higher speed. This is because at slow speeds, sliding motion between the balls ceases during contact and the balls rotate together like gears before separating. This is called the gearing limit, where throw is maximum for a given cut angle. In this case, added friction with slower speed will not create more throw because there is already enough friction to create gearing. Now let's look at how throw varies with ball surface condition. For the remaining sets of tests, 5 to 10 shots were hit and only the 3 shots with the most consistent speeds, based on the object ball distances traveled, were kept and the measured throw values were averaged. For each test, I show the 3 shots along with the average throw measurement. The first test was for a new set of Aramith balls, which had never been used before. They were taken straight out of the box. Now let's dispel a myth concerning cling, also known as skid or kick. Cling is an excessive amount of throw, more than would be expected under normal conditions. Some people have suggested that a major cause of cling is static electricity, resulting from the cue ball sliding across the tablecloth, for example during a stun or draw shot. To create as much static charge as possible, I held the ball with two pieces of rubber to insulate the ball from my fingers, and then vigorously rubbed the ball on a fold of tablecloth. The small pieces of paper being attracted to the ball show that the ball is loaded with static electricity. The rubbing was done before each shot test.
Here's a summary of the static electricity test results. Static electricity alone definitely does not create cling, skid, or kick. The throw of the charged ball was actually less, although the difference was not significant and could represent experimental error. The reduced throw could have also been caused by the rubbing on the cloth, creating a slight polishing effect on the ball. Regardless, static electricity definitely did not cause an increase in throw, as some people have suggested. Cling, skid, or kick is often caused by a chalk smudge appearing at the contact point between the cue ball and object ball. First, let's test a set of used and cleaned balls, then I will add a chalk mark at the contact point. Before each of the following shots, I applied chalk marks to each object ball by striking each with a well-chalked tip. Then I placed the balls in position with the chalk marks touching at the contact point. In this case, the used balls had less throw, 4.4 degrees, than the new out-of-the-box balls tested earlier, which threw about 5.8 degrees. A chalk smudge at the contact point created about 50% more throw than normal for this test. The cling effect can be even greater at other cut angles and speeds. Now let's look at various surface treatments to see what effect they have on throw. First, let's do a baseline test with unmodified used balls. Now I've washed the balls with dishwashing liquid. Notice how the throw increases. I will summarize all of the results at the end. Now I've cleaned the balls with an Aramith ball cleaner. Notice how the throw decreases. Now I've treated the balls with a super hard coat turtle wax. Notice how the throw decreases even more. Now I've wiped the balls with silicone spray. Notice how the throw decreases even more. Now I've cleaned the balls with acetone. Notice how the throw increases dramatically. Now I wet the ball contact area with saliva. Notice how the throw decreases dramatically.
Now I've cleaned the balls with rubbing alcohol. This is after the acetone clean. Later I'll do an isolated test with just the alcohol. Notice how the throw returns to large values again. Now I'll roughen the ball contact areas with fine grit sandpaper. Notice how the throw doesn't change much. Now I've added chalk to the rough spots. Again, notice that the throw doesn't change very much. Here's a summary of all of the results. Standard pull ball cleaners reduce throw some. Car wax can reduce throw significantly. Saliva and silicone spray can each practically eliminate throw. About 7 degrees seems to be the maximum throw possible for a 30 degree cut. This probably corresponds to the gearing limit discussed earlier. Attempting to create additional friction with sandpaper and chalk did not increase the amount of throw. It appears that the squeaky clean surfaces dishwashing liquid and alcohol create result in the most throw. Now I'm switching to a different set of balls and a 45 degree cut angle. With this set of tests, I decided to add an additional cue ball at the ghost ball position frozen to the first object ball. This helps ensure a consistent and square hit and minimizes any effects of unintentional side spin on the cue ball. It also allows us to easily simulate the effects of different conditions on the cue ball to object ball contact point. First, let's look at how throw changes with speed at the steeper cut angle. Here's the data, and here's the plot. As before, notice how throw decreases at faster speeds and appears to approach a limit at slower speeds where friction is maximum. Now let's look at different surface conditions starting with the unmodified used balls. The first treatment is rubbing alcohol, so now we will see the independent effects of alcohol. Remember before we cleaned with alcohol after the balls had already been cleaned with acetone. Notice how as before the amount of throw increases dramatically. In this case, since the cut angle is larger than before, there is potential for a much larger increase in throw because it takes more friction force to gear the balls together.
Notice how throw again decreases with the Aramith ball cleaner. Now I've applied chalk to both contact points of the three frozen balls. Notice how the throw increases dramatically. Also notice how the frozen cue ball picks up some spin as the first object ball acquires spin during collision as the object balls attempt to gear together. Now I've cleaned the chalk off the frozen cue ball and wet the cue ball object ball contact point with saliva. Notice how the frozen cue ball now picks up no spin as the object balls attempt to gear during the collision. At first, I thought the amount of throw would be very different, but it doesn't change much. This sort of justifies the frozen combo test because it shows that there is no significant effect on throw when the cue ball is in contact with the first object ball during the collision, even if there is chalk between the balls. Here's a summary of the results for the 45 degree cut tests. As before, cleaning with the Aramith ball cleaner reduced the amount of throw below what is typical with used and unclean balls. Cleaning with alcohol, as with acetone before, creates a similar amount of cling as chalk on the contact point. Therefore, I wouldn't recommend cleaning pool balls with solvents like acetone or alcohol. They clean the balls so well that nothing is left behind to help reduce friction between the bare surfaces. Notice that much more throw is possible at larger cut angles. With the 30 degree cuts earlier, the max was about 7 degrees. Here, with the 45 degree cut, the max is over 11 degrees. At larger cut angles, it takes more friction force to gear the balls together, so added friction can have a greater effect. Based on the results of this experiment, here is some important advice. Keep pool balls clean. Also, wipe chalk marks off the cue ball whenever you have ball on hand and between games. Also clean chalk smudges off object balls if you spot any. Dirty and chalk smudged conditions can result in excessive throw. Finally, use standard pool ball cleaners. Other cleaning products and waxes can create radically different throw properties. For more information and resources dealing with throw and cling, see the throw FAQ page at billiards.colostate.edu. Before closing, I wanted to send thanks to Bob Jewett and Jim Valacina who provided some useful input and advice concerning the experiment.